All right, what's up Dragon Brood? Today, we're gonna have some fun with elves, mostly because we actually got some black elves that were pretty good that also allow us to incubate. So we kind of get two birds, one stone, but let's go see if it's actually any good to play on the standard ladder. Quick shout out to our newest YouTube member, Lonnie2. Thank you, welcome to the brood, much appreciated. The support is always nice. Now getting into this, we're gonna start with something like Gala Greeters, mostly because Gala Greeters works really well with a couple other things in the deck and getting that treasure could also be very important. It's gonna be a balance of deciding when to get treasure, when to get life, because that's gonna decide some different matchups. The obvious thing that it does combo with is Jenny Fey. Mostly because we can turn those treasure into creatures and then those creatures come into play and trigger the Gala Greeters again. And if you can get that rolling, you can start to go wide enough that your opponent's gonna have a lot of issues. But while we're on the subject of Jenny Fey, there's a couple of things in this deck that combo with it. One of the first things being that Vat Keeper actually gives you a 3-3 when you play it. And then with Jenny Fey out, you actually get to make an incubate token that you can turn into a cat or a dog that comes into play with the two plus one plus one counters you would get on that incubate token as well. So you get a pretty sizable creature for that for three mana, which is a pretty good little combo. Additionally, we're playing the big Glissa, which actually lets you do that every turn twice. So that's just as good. Or even just by itself, she can be a one person army to help you in those longer matchups. So really good card overall. I think it's gonna do a lot of work here. Some other things we're gonna be playing though are things like King Darien Extra Large EA, which isn't an elf, I totally get. And I think that's gonna surprise some people, but one, we needed more things to go wide with our creatures and pump them up. Also, being able to protect your tokens is actually very big. So if we do get into a situation where there's a sweeper and we've already transformed a bunch of incubates, this will actually let you go ahead and keep those alive. So I like that interaction. Of course, we're gonna be playing Leaf Crown Visionary because this is one of the few ways we can actually get cards in the deck. So yeah, and it pumps our team. So it really takes care of a lot of things. And actually another thing, coming back to Jenny Fey, we're gonna play a couple of copies of Glistening Dawn. Partly because with Jenny Fey out, there's a lot of times we're gonna be able to get a four or five extra tokens on a creature. And since we can make cats with haste, this can just be a big attack all by itself on back-to-back -back turns. So you don't wanna really turn your nose up at that. And then of course, we're gonna be playing some Tyvar stand because we have to protect all of our stuff. Now, we do have some other cards we'll be playing, but those are the key cards we're gonna be worrying about today. Also, if you want to get the full deck list, it will be at the end of the video, and we'll talk about what we learned from our games that we played so we can make some updates. Also, if you just want to download it, it'll be in the description below. And this is where I'd like to tell you if you haven't, please consider hitting the like button because it helps the video get in front of the people. And subscribe so you get to see more crazy experiments like this. But let's go play some games, and I'll catch up with you on the back end of the video, and we'll see what we learn. Oh boy, damage lands galore. All right, we'll gamble. but we need at least one non-damaged land to give us any realistic shot here. Oh, that's... No, we can't. We gotta do this, or else we're just gonna take too much damage from our own lands otherwise. Boy, I wanted to play the Leaf Crown, though. I really did. Partly because there is a world where, like, if you play Leaf Crown, then you can just pay the extra to get that. Okay, that helps. Quite a bit. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and play the Jenny Fey here. Just to have the bigger body fighting. And if they have another Fading Hope, so be it. I mean, maybe they want to counter stuff here. Maybe they don't. I don't know. Uh, let's go here. See how they feel about it. We'll try to attack. And they're going to bounce it? Nope. Alright, this can get make disappeared. We can live with that. No, it didn't even get make disappeared. What are they sitting on? Is this just a case against, you know, we got a good start against the blue deck and it is what it is? Yeah, okay. I mean, I'm going to pay. Go to 15. Oh, Arena. It couldn't even give me that courtesy to let me just take a point of damage. Didn't matter, though. Opponent scoops there. All right. Let's keep it. 
Let's see where this goes. Alright, how much do you care about a stalwart? Probably not much. Well, of course not. When you have that, why would you care? Do, 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 do. Put this on elf. And play this duder. So how does stuff die? Hey, cool. I can appreciate that. I've actually played that a couple times and enjoyed the heck out of it. Let's just play this, though, for now. And pass. See how things go. Now, hopefully, Glissa draws some ire and we can Jenny Fay Leaf Crown, which would be pretty sweet. The opponent's making a frog and then they're giving us a thing, but then they can get back all their rats. Okay. That's a thing that happened. Uh, we start here. Try to attack with Glissa. We'll see what happens. All right, no blocks, so we just get to have a free rat. That's cool, I guess. Could have got rid of their creature, but nah. All right. I'm getting the Jennifer down, so we could try to get a big glistening dawn next turn, possibly. All right. So they get a thing. I've been seeing a lot of Rotten Reunion lately, and I wonder if that's people's answer to playing Atraxa. That's sort of what that feels like. Alright, Tashiro's probably going to kill Leaf Crown Visionary. Because that's what I would do. But uh, not a bad situation here, actually. They can attack with their three power things, but yeah, we're not blocking. Actually, that's not true. I'll block with this thing. There we go. Take three. Go to 15. Uh, play this. Put it on... We'll call a human just in case we draw our wonderful king. We're going to go with this. Make two big hasty cats. Uh, turn this into a 3-3. Three, three. And then we're going to attack with everything. All right, I guess that's it. <laughs> Destroy an enchantment, kill that, I guess. All right, well, that was that was a quick one. Oh, man. Uh, All right, we'll keep it. It's not bad enough to throw away, but we don't really get to use a Sentinel Star Wart here because we need to make sure we can cast Loam Speaker on two. Or Leaf Crown, depending on what we think we're up against. Alright. Let's see what we got. Opponent says hello. Alright, that might help a little bit. Don't hate that. Let's see where they're headed with this. Oh, so it's that, huh? Alright. So I assume we're going to get something removed this turn. And we didn't draw land. So I guess we loam speaker into this. We get something removed here. Probably the loam speaker. We could play this if we found a land. And eh, I would still be hard pressed. But they didn't find what they wanted here. So this this gets very interesting very quickly. Um, I'm going to do this. Make a treasure. And then just pass. So now they can remove something, attack us for six. We could leaf crown, then go for the throat. Or we could just glissa up. Which is fine. We just take the beating there. I think that's okay. I mean, I say it's, I think that's okay, but like, 
It's not the safest play here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven mana. And we still have Stalwart if we want it. So yeah, I'm good with this. Uh, tap this, I guess. Still gives us access to go for the throat. I think I'm just going to get treasure here. Go ahead and incubate. No attacks. And this gives us options to do a few things. Yeah, we just let that happen in case they have something to protect the creatures or whatever. We want them to try to play like another Machikos to maybe punch through a Glissa or something like that. Weaver of Harmony, that's fine, though that stands to be a problem next turn, so we do have to respect that. These also happen to not be, uh... Ooh, actually... Hmm. Yeah, I, I think it's worth killing that. Oh, actually, you know what I should have done? I should have double blocked first. I'd have been willing to give up a Lone Speaker there. That's a mistake. I could have killed more of their board here and that would have been huge actually all right let's go here let's gain two i mean because we're gonna get the other part of that anyway let's how are we tapping this one two three okay having to play really close attention to how it's the auto tappers wanting to do stuff here All right, uh, we'll just plus one. Eventually, we got to start being ready to fight. Um, I have a feeling we're going to get multiple things exiled, so I'm trying to decide how I want to incubate things here. But they're only, we're only going to lose one thing, so I think we just go to incubate action, and we. Man, how much damage are we going to take? We can plus that. That's going to be six. So technically we could first strike with Glissa. I think I'm just going to attack with this. I think. But last turn, I definitely made a bad block where I could have killed off the opponent's stuff. And that's that comes back to bite us here. Because we could have got rid of both of those with no real penalty. And how that would have worked is it would have just double blocked. Then used the mana to play the go for the throat. And then the other one dies and all I lose is a is a creature, but seems fine. Oh, if that's all they're doing, we're set. Like, this is great, actually. Because we can just block with Glissa here. So they just got double trigger? Yeah, alright. Cool. That works. This is an easy mulligan. Well, that mulligan got a whole lot more difficult. Uh... Alright. Sure... Oh, man, I don't know what we're going to do with this. Some people believe in Jesus Christ. We get to play against Jesus Christ, though. That's pretty important to note. Uh, let's just go elf. Play this guy. I should have played the fours first and played the stalwart because there is a possibility that I could draw King Darien here, and I probably want that on something else. But it it's whatever. Okay. Now, if they do for some reason let the stalwart live, this is one of the rare times it could be important. Alright, I'm just going to do this so I have access to black mana. And just attack for one. And if they kill the stalwart, they kill it. We won't be excited about it, but it's whatever. I wanted to leave this up so we could still shoot things on the opponent's side. They might just go digging here with like an impulse or something. Nope. I thought this might be the proliferate type deck and they were just going to go digging there, but I guess not. Hmm. Not sure what to do now. Because we don't have many creatures behind. I kind of need the opponent to do something. Alright, so we want to cut down that. Alright. Well, here's open. I mean, make this appear incoming. Yep. I mean, there's nothing else we were going to do. <laughs> like, we drew two creatures, so... in a deck that's chock full of creatures. 
And nothing to back them up here, unfortunately. And I'm sure the opponent's playing just piles of removal. I mean, I guess on the plus side, if there's like a shield rid, we'd at least be able to kill it. Alright, if our opponent does anything relevant here, I'm just going to scoop and move on to the next game. Alright, GG's. <laughs> like, we, we have zero threats there. We're not winning that. Ooh, boy. No black mana, so we can't... Oh, man. Golly, that's so close to being playable. It was right on the cusp. Uh, we'll keep this, but know that this could be a disaster. Let's get rid of... Ooh, okay. Let's see what happens. I'm hoping to draw some type of two-mana thing here. All right, that's actually one of the better two-mana things we could draw, believe it or not. Please don't remove our Galag readers. All right. So now I'm really going to need mana for a tie bar stand. All right, we have a backup Jenny Faye. I guess that works. I'm actually going to get a treasure here and let it just be a treasure. Actually, or do I want the... Hmm. You know what? All right. I'm actually not going to do that. Actually, crap. Because if not, we want to play Glissa next turn and be able to tie bar stand. All right. It's just going to be a treasure this time. Dang it. Because I have a feeling Jenny Faye is going to be gone. Oh, it wasn't. Dang it. If I'd have known I was going to get to keep my Jenny Faye. Ugh. I would have done so many things differently there. Oh, I might get to keep both creatures? What? Ugh. Nah, that's just greedy, right? I mean, I guess they could sweep the board here. All right, sure. Can't just not do nothing, right? That's not a thing. All right, we're going to turn one of these into... Let's say a cat, because a one toughness thing is not the best here. And then we'll attack with Jenny Fay. Their deck normally doesn't have a way to do anything about this. All right. Cool. Come on. Don't even if they depopulate though, we get to at least keep Glissa, so that's fine, I guess. Oh, it's just a bank buster, though. This is looking pretty good. This is not bad. Oh, man. All right. We get to untap with double tie bar stand. Unfortunately, we can't do anything else. <laughs> so, unless we just want to, like, waste a Jenny Faye. But that's that's not quality magic, so we're not going to do that. Uh, can only attack with these safely, unfortunately. Opponent's just going to draw a card here, I imagine. Okay, trade those for... Oh, all right. We're going to get some Glissa action? That sounds good. Uh-oh. You're going to make us waste a tie bar, Stan. Yep. All right. We do what we got to do. Um, I'm going to do it... Ah, see, the problem is we might draw something we want to cast. I'm going to do it for one, though. Maybe we find something else useful. Now, here's the thing. We could take a card, or we could just kill off the companion and we get to keep a 2-2 here. I think, though, I'm just going to take a card and let this 2-2 bite the dust. Well, back up Tyvar, Stan. Okay. Sure. In the turn. So now this is interesting, right? Because if they have... A depopulate here, then we probably save Glissa and Gala Greeters and roll into another Jenny Faye. Would be the plan. Uh, land, not what we're looking for. Okay, so let's say they crew Bankbuster, Jenny Faye dies. We roll out the other Jenny Faye. All right. I think that's still part of our plan. Not as happy as it was before, but I guess it's okay. Yeah. For two? I guess it only needs to be for one to really just keep it alive. 
And there's a chance we find something else, obviously. Take a card. Uh, yeah. Okay. That's actually not bad either. I can commit to playing this. So we get a treasure. Treasure becomes, I guess, a dog here, maybe. And then uh, get a plus one in the turn. All right, so now the king can save a dog. This can save Glissa. And then we can tie our stands something. Yeah, all right. We're at least doing stuff here. Okay, it wasn't a Wandering Emperor. That was like my first thought. We might have to use a tie bar stand on Wandering Emperor and something else. Problem is, I think we're getting set up to uh, get beat down by simply a uh, farewell, which is unfortunate. Uh, yeah, I think we attack with everything here. Because we can use uh, the King's wonderful ability. I think that's what we're going to do. Just say, you do what you're going to do here, opponent. Yeah, that's still game, right? I mean, that's eight getting through. I mean, th this worked out well. I don't know how this worked out the way it did, but yeah, cool. We'll take it. Okay, let's go stalwarts. Yeah, sure, sure. We're good with this. Because we can stalwarts. Loam Speaker, protect something if we have to, and then we can for sure Jenny Faye and leave that up. So that's, that's an option. Uh, this we're going to put on human. Awkward. Actually, crap. Yeah, yeah. I think we do. I think that's still the right play here. Especially since we have Loam Speaker and a way to protect it. Not to say that we'll get to, but you never know. Opponent's like, I might need to kill this little thing. I mean, I have to admit, I've been busting on Stalwart, but there's a couple times it's actually done okay. Blood Tithe Harvester, sure. Okay. Alright. So now, do we Jenny Fay or do we King? I think we Jenny Fay here. And then we king next turn? Yeah. And then we can attack with bigger stuff, I think, is the plan. And we pass. I think that's the smart way to go about it. And I'm not even totally sure I care about them killing a Jenny Fay here, since we have a backup. But we'll see. Uh-oh, are they going to kill our stalwart? And then force us to try to defend the Jenny Fay? That's funny. Uh, all right, I'll tap for green mana. <laughs> like, maybe they'll try to kill Jenny Faye before moving phases, and they did. Awesome sauce. Now, that worked out because they had a sorcery and they had to use it that turn. Otherwise, they wouldn't. They would have moved past the phase, and then if they stole Jenny Faye, they wouldn't be able to attack with it. So that worked out great. I've been seeing that from a few decks lately. We're gonna go ahead and just make some five fives here. Attack for thirteen. Put the opponent down to six. Yeah, this card's been coming up a lot lately. Furnace Reigns is something I think y'all need to pay attention to. Yep. All right. We'll take it. We'll take it. Oh man. Uh, whoo. All right, let's keep it. That didn't work. <laughs> I was really hoping this would have been an untapped land, then we could have stalwart and did some other shenanigans, but no dice. Okay, let's go with this. And then... All right, Prowler, you got it. We're going to have a hard time keeping up here. This draw was not fast. But we're going to do the best we can. All right. We can do this into treasure. Into this. 
to pump our creature. No attack. All right, so we're going to take a pile of damage. We're taking at least seven here, probably more. Oh, now they're going to be able to cast whatever they want next turn. That's brutal. All right, no blocks. All right, so we do have a Tyvar stand. Another Gala Greeters. That's at least intriguing here. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven mana. That's actually enough to do what we want to do here. It does tap out our creatures, but not the worst thing. All right, so let's go Gala Greeters. So we will get a treasure with the first one. We will play this. Auto pay with the treasure. Tapping the new one. Getting... To... Turning into a 3-3. Three, three. Does that help? <laughs> I'm like, does it turn make it into 3-3 three, three matter? Let's gain the life here, actually. And then let's get two life from the other one. Let's incubate twice. No attacks. All right. Man, if we can get a Jenny Fay in this situation, it'd be huge. Or a creature at all, really, because the life gain is, is going to matter a lot here, too. Okay, this is good. They didn't instantly attack with Prowler or Kadama, so that's that's solid for us. We're not blocking here. I think blocking's just a trap. And next turn, we at least have mana that we can incubate a bunch of things. Like, we have we have options now. And, and we have Tyvar Stand. So we don't have to get too crazy. Alright, we didn't get a creature, which sucks. But we just incubate here. Just kind of keep that going. No attacks. And we're at 10 life. So we have a little bit of wiggle room. As long as they don't have, like, I don't know, some big... Shivan Devastator or something here. All right. This is where I think... I don't know if I want to use the Tyvar stance here or not. All right. I'm going to go ahead and... I'm going to hit up two of these. And see how the opponent feels. We're going to block with all of them. Just to force them to use a tie bar stand. Because I'm pretty sure that's what they're sitting on. No, they're not. Oh, they have a Terra Sunder. Oh, buddy. Oh, buddy. We're going to do this for two? Heck yeah. You ain't getting what you want to get. Oh, that worked out great. Opponent thought they were going to get us. Got a little greedy. They do get to move their counters here, though. So now we do have to deal with the big prowler. But that's okay. We we will... That, that's a fight for future us. Alright, there we go. Now we get to start moving things forward a little bit. Let's get some things. Let's uh, gain a little life. And we'll just go ahead and incubate some more. No attacks, and the turn. Alright, what else you got for us? Hot springs. They get to add a lot of counters to things. And anything else will have haste here, so that's real. Uh, I think we're going to do much the same that we did before. We're going to put a bunch of stuff in front of that. So we're going to activate... Uh, don't want to make sure we still have mana available, so if we tap that and that, we can still do that if necessary. Sure. Just want to do enough to force the opponent to spend a card or something. Alright. Sure. What you got for us? That's it? Alright, let's try then. Uh, I'm going to do it for one, just in case. Okay, they didn't have anything. Great. So we didn't even lose anything in that. And we got another tie bar stand. Oh, you love to see it. All right. Uh, I think we just incubate again. And then next turn, we try to just give stuff double strike, right? 
Is that where we're at? All right, no attacks in the turn. Now, whatever comes down is going to have haste here, and it could be something crazy, because they've got six mana. Oh, it's just a beast collar. We can deal with that. Nope, oh, they're going to kill our land. Wouldn't be too upset about that here. Help us thin our deck out would be great. All right, opponent's putting a counter on it. All right. Incubate. 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 All of it. Uh, yeah, tap that. I don't care. Oh! Savage. No, Arena, why? Why are we tapping creatures here, Arena? That's not even necessary. All right. Give everything double strike here, then. Leave a couple things back, just in case. Uh, but we should be good. I can't imagine this doesn't work. Sure. That was... They started out so strong. But man, Glissa. The one-person army, for sure. And we still have a Tyvar staying to back it up. Which is even crazier. Yeah, alright. That's game. Didn't even have to get to the double strike portion. No. Okay. Um. I guess we're gonna keep this, but man, I do not feel confident about this. That was. That just felt like a tough decision, and I feel like we're about to lose a loam speaker, sadly. So what do we do with this information? Um. I guess we could try to just play the stalwart, let the stalwart die, see if we draw a land. That's probably the safest thing here. As much as I don't love it. But, like, they might just try to shoot this. And then attack us. And even then, I don't even know... Oh, they're just shooting us. Okay, so they're gonna let us keep the stalwart. That's good. That's good. Because now, even if we don't draw a land... We would be able to... I don't even know. Maybe we play Loam Speaker anyway. Because we do need the mana and a solid blocker is good. This this mana actually helps. Okay. If we play the Leaf Crown Visionary, they could play their like deal one damage to everything. Then we save the Leaf Crown Visionary. That still protects it in the Stalwart. So that's something. I mean, I guess they could have more Lightning Strike. I don't... I'm going to go with this. Mostly because I feel like it at least gives us a reasonable chance to try to do other things if necessary. And I'm just going to pass. Mostly because I don't want to take the point of damage here if I don't have to. Or, in a pinch, if we need to shoot something down, we can. Mechanized Warfare. That's not cool. But we can kill a Phoenix Chick here. So I guess that's fine. Like, saves us some damage. Which is important. And then now we can at least try to start attacking back. Ooh. That's a thing. Uh, yeah, let's do that. Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, do we just take a point here? Uh, I'm gonna take a point. I'm gonna take a point. Maybe we draw a land? Okay, we did. So that opens up the door for us to do some other things. We can attack for five here. We are only at 12, and they have mechanized warfare, so got to respect it. All right, they're going to lightning strike that. I think we just save it. If they're showing us they don't have anything at this point, and they can't block here. Also interesting, they didn't go after a leaf crown visionary. They tried to go after a stalwart. So, yeah, exactly. So saying, that means they had to have had something else. The other good news here, though, is those spells went after creatures and not to our face. That is actually a lot of damage we saved. That is very good. Alright, we're gonna attack for three. We don't quite have lethal yet. Three, two, three, four, five, six. If we turn into creatures, seven, eight, nine, ten. Definitely not gonna get us there yet. Ooh, we might be dead next turn. 
Yeah, this is gonna hurt. Yep, and then we go down to six. I'd love to. One of those is a spell, one is a land, so that's four damage we have to deal with next turn. Alright, how do we get out of this? Not like that. <laughs> that is definitely not the answer. Um... Hmm, so this is tough, because now we die to hasty things. But we also need to kill Chandra. Uh, we could do this for four and still... Alright, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to send... Oh, actually, I should have turned a land into a creature here. That was a mistake. Attack here. One, two, three. Yeah, this that's actually fine. This actually works out fine, just the same, I guess. Like, not ideal, but it'll do. No Alright, so we just need them to not draw something relevant here so we can try to win next turn. This is it. Actually, I probably should have saved the Leaf Crown Visionary back. Because that's probably the only way we could lose here. Did they get a burn spell? Ah, uh, they did. Alright, GG's. Didn't matter anyway. Okay. Um... Sadly, this doesn't really do much. Like, even if... I mean... Hmm. Alright, I'm gonna keep it. Mostly because if we do find a land in the first three turns, assuming Stalwart lives, because most people don't want to waste removal on Stalwart, like, we can actually keep our creature with the tie bar stand. And we do have a turn to play and go for the throat if we need to kill something. But if we don't get land on the next two draws, this is gonna be pretty pitiful. Alright, that is surrogate land, so I guess that's fine. <laughs> it's it's like land. And as long as we're holding a tie bar stand, I think we're mostly safe. Uh you know, do I care about protecting this? I think I do. Yeah, if we had more land in hand, I think I wouldn't be so concerned. Yeah, you might as well attack and get your free shot in, opponent. Okay, now we found land. But if we would have had it, I would have been okay letting it die and then protecting something like this, which would have been more valuable. But it is what it is. Gonna just attack for one here. Also possible we could have played the king and then shot something. So if they have another removal, it takes out the king first and then Glissa, maybe. Because if they have another removal card here, we're definitely losing Glissa. Okay, they don't have it. That's great news. So now we can toy with the idea of trying to kill a chorus and attack. Well, now they have two choruses, so that changes. So that's no longer a thing, but uh, Arena... Oh, wait, no, we have to take damage here. All right, or tap a creature. Sorry, not take damage. Uh, yeah, we're going to attack with this, though. And just let you turn those into little mites, I guess. Oh, they're just going to give us a card? Wow. I assumed they were going to block, for sure. All right, in the turn. Maybe they just have a sweeper here. If they do, I am going to fire one of these off so it turns into a mite and a mite dies in the transaction. <laughs> And then we just try to Nissa after the fact. I think it's going to be the game plan. All right. Well, that's that. Oh, boy. We're going to mulligan this. We're definitely keeping. Just uh, not sure. Hmm. I guess Glistening Dawn has to go. Yeah, I think we get rid of Glistening Dawn here. As much as I don't like that... And not knowing what we're up against. But, you know, I think this could potentially lead to bigger payoffs. If we're playing against, like, mono black and mono red, I don't think it would have made much difference here. We're playing against black and red. There you go. So, there's that. Which now becomes a thing because I don't know if we actually get to keep Loam Speaker. But I... Uh, see, this is tough because... Now I'm caught in a spot where if I play the Leaf Crown Visionary, it probably dies. And then, oof. All right. 
think we're just going to do this. I think I'm supposed to just play Visionary, though, and then just protect the Loam Speaker next turn. Because I could have played this and still be able to cast King Darien. Now I'm going to be priced into just calling Elves with this. Okay, they didn't have a thing to kill the Loam Speaker, though. We got away with one. That definitely shouldn't happen, but I am going to accept that as a win, let me tell you. Uh, so now this gets interesting. I think we go here. And then just pass. So we can protect stuff. King next turn would still tie bar stand up. Or we possibly find elves and can start doing stuff with the elves. The other thing that sometimes happens here too is if they target with the harvester first. Well, either way, if they have two removal and they're trying to stack them, like... Okay, that doesn't do anything. But, like, you can respond and then they only get to do one thing. We're at 18-2, so that's kind of nice. Opponent's on four cards, but they could obviously do all kinds of stuff here. All right, here's hoping. I'm going to do it for one, not that it matters. Actually, no, because we can still block here. Let's just do it for zero. All right. All right, that's all it took. All right, so there's really not a lot to say here. I think the weakest cards in the deck might be Vat Keeper. Overall, it, it's, it only came up a couple of times, and when it did, it wasn't that impactful. But it is really nice if you already have a Glissa, I mean, a, a Jenny Fey out, because then you can go and get a 3-3 three, three and a 4-4 four, four on the same turn. And that's kind of nice. Or if you need a 5-whatever, five, 5-4, five, 5-3 five, blocker, that's okay too. But it gives you some real options here. So I don't hate it. But we almost never paid five to use the transform ability. So if you wanted to replace this with something like Tamiyo's Safekeeping to protect some of your other creatures, which is a pretty valuable thing, I think that's reasonable. Or if you wanted to play some other more solid removal, either something that removes Planeswalkers, maybe a Fateful Absence, something like that, I think that's justifiable as well. Or if you wanted to play something that just had reach or whatever because we don't have much to deal with flyers and that's going to be one of your weaknesses against mono red so maybe i don't know that's something to think about everything else I actually liked in here and i didn't again i didn't hate the vat keeper i just felt like it could possibly be another card but here's what we ran with here today two sentinel star Wars, three go for the throat four gallag readers four leaf crown visionary four loam speaker two vat keeper three glissa two king darian extra large the eighth Four, Jenny Fay, two, Glistening Dawn, two, Glissa, the big Glissa, Herald of Predation, one, Nissa, Ascendant Animus, four, Tyvar Stan. Lands were playing one, Takanuma, Beseju, five, Forest, four, Deathcap Glade, four, Land of War Waste, one, Brushland, two, Overgrown Farmland, two, Rage of Earth Thicket, four, Secluded Courtyard. One thing I would point out here as well is if you wanted to cut the Vat Keepers, you could potentially also cut nissa and maybe try to play something like terra sunder i do like terra sunder a lot and it does solve several problems being able to get rid of problematic artifacts and enchantments which we don't really have so maybe that's a thing i mean even against red you can get rid of stuff like mechanized warfare or their artifact lands if they want to do something with that so at least gives you a couple other options some potential outs for four mana and we do have a lot of ways to generate mana so maybe that's actually better like, either combination, I think you replace the... I would say this. Replace the two Vat Keepers and Nyssa with some combination of two, probably, Terra Sunders and one Tamiyo Safekeeping. I don't know if I'm going to put that in the final list. I mean, we are already playing a lot of creatures. There's 27, plus we're generating some. But that's something I would think about. As for what we played in this video... Two Sentinel Stalwart, three Go for the Throat, four Gallag Readers, four Leaf Crown Visionary, four Loam Speaker, two Vat Keeper, three Glissa Sunslayer, two King Darien, Extra Large at Eighth. We already went over this. <laughs> now, I will say this about the deck. I, it actually performed better than I thought, so there's that. We had a lot of games you also didn't see on camera where, like, opponents just scooped early because you get the, like... Loam Speaker, uh, I mean, uh, Gallag Readers, Jenny Fey combination. Or you get like an early mana creature and a visionary, they go to kill it, you're able to protect it, and then you just get value from there. Or you get a turn four, I mean, turn four, or turn five, like big Glissa, and then your opponent can't do anything about it, right? Stuff like that 
they just scoop early. So you will have a lot of games like that, which are pretty good. I will say you can have matchups that are a little bit tough, like Mono Red, which is why I think adding a couple of copies of Tamiyo Safekeeping could be pretty good if you want to do that. And again, two Tamiyo Safekeeping, one Terra Sunder, I think is totally reasonable. It gives you some options, and then you don't really have to care so much about the Vat Keeper, and you're just giving yourself some more versatility to keep more things on the board. And those are also helping you be resistant against some sweepers as well. So totally worth it. And don't forget, you get life gain off of the uh, Tamiyo Safekeeping. So yeah, I like everything that's being presented there. All the cards played well. I like the combination of stuff. Nissa was a little slow. We only used it, I think, one time. So I'm fine cutting it. And I may even just make those changes in the final list overall. But yeah, this was actually surprisingly solid. I thought it was going to be a lot worse than it was. But, you know, hey, we'll, we'll take it. A win's a win. And for today's card spotlight, we're going to talk about Elvish Champion. This is kind of an old card that sort of gets forgotten. But surprisingly, it's had like, I don't know, seven or eight reprints, it feels like. Some of those being like special promos, some being league stuff. But the reality of this card is that a lot of those promos are very expensive. And I think this is a card that I've come across multiple times in collections just tossed to the side. Because at the time, when these promos came out, it wasn't worth very much. And there were a lot of Elvish Visionary, or Elvish <laughs> Champions. The thing is though, now, those things are worth more. And honestly, even the one that recently got reprinted on the list is still worth like six to $8. So don't toss these aside and go through your stuff if you have some old ones, because these are worth way more, like $100 more than you probably thought they're worth. And if you had fun with today's deck list, you'll probably also like the Selesnia's counters list that we had that used a lot of the new cards that really went off. But that's all I have for now. We'll see you next time.